In this week's Peak Mechanical, we're going to take a look at the Tiagra 4700 shifter, why it's so weird and unique, and what interesting Peak Mechanical drivetrains we can do with it. If you're new to this series, Peak Mechanical is where we find the best cable-only drivetrains, cable brakes, cable shifting, with the widest possible gear range. And we're talking real range here, none of that SRAM BS. And it's because I believe that mechanical drivetrains offer the best control and customization as opposed to electronic drivetrains where you're just stuck with what they give you and there's not a whole lot you can do. The reason I started this series is because I wanted a drivetrain that was reliable and durable, didn't use any batteries, much like the sponsor of today's episode, Old Man Mountain. They've been around for 25 years, making some of the most functional, durable, and compatible bike racks out there on the market. And you know, all those words are my love language. You can run them on bikes with eyelets or on through axles or even quick release. They've been doing the axle mounted rack game long before anyone else. They're also innovating with cool products like their new pizza rack. It's a platform rack that integrates with their tactical basket. You can use it as a bag support for paradise bags or just bungee things to the top of it. New this year is that they've also added water bottle mounts to the uprights and in total it supports 35 pounds, which is just bananas. I'm a huge advocate for functionality and compatibility and Old Man Mountain products ticks all those boxes. And because of that, I'm super stoked that they're sponsoring a couple episodes of Peak Mechanical. So to know what makes Tiagra 4700 10 speed so special, we have to back up a bit. And here's a very abbreviated history of Shimano cable pull and compatibility and what you need to know. So seven, eight and nine speed Shimano road and mountain operated on the same cable pull of 1.7 or what Shimano called two to the one because it was just easier to say than 1.7. Regardless, we're gonna call it Shimano Classic, just like Coke Classic for the sake of this video. During this magical period of Shimano Classic, road and mountain bike shifters and derailers were interchangeable. Unlike today, where you have to pay for the privilege uh, to make your curly bar shifters work with your mountain bike rear derailers. So this, this magical period of harmony between road and mountain lasted until 10 speed, and that's when things got weird. Sora 105 Ultegra and Durace 10 speed still use Shimano Classic, but Tiagra did not. That's why whenever you look at compatibility charts or information around 10-speed drivetrains, there's always an asterisk around Tiagra 4700. Tiagra had a different cable pull closer to 1.48 or 1.5, would ultimately become the cable pull for Shimano 11 and 12-speed road. For the sake of this video, we're gonna call it uh, Sh New Shimano, like New Coke. Why did Shimano introduce New Shimano in Tiagra level of uh, you know their 10 speed group and not Durace or Altegra? We'll never know. But what this means is that uh, while Tiagra 4700 is normally 10 speed, it works with 11 speed uh, derailers as long as you use 10 speed cassettes. This means with Tiagra 4700, you can shift the newer and higher capacity rear derailers like Shimano GRX, uh, which in my opinion are actually my favorite derailers out there at the moment, which offer huge two by gear capacity that we've not seen in traditional Shimano road groups. Another thing that this means is that although this video is largely about Tiagra 4700 and how to use it with 10 speed drivetrains, we can use this as a proxy for 11 speed shifters. So all the derailers I'm gonna show you today will work with Shimano 11 speed shifters. So if you use Shimano 105 11 speed GRX, uh, these hacks should apply to you as well. Even though we're talking about 10 speed specifically, Again, it uses 11 speed, so this this will this will work with your 11 speed drivetrains. Okay, so I've been doing a lot of riding over the last few months with Tiagra 4700 and uh, with many rear derailers. That's why this video is taking so long. I wanted to really like make sure these things work. The derailers I used was the GRX 810, the GRX 400, the Q's RD 8020 11 speed rear derailer SGS type as well as the S-Ride 508C. For the cranks, I'm using a 4630 by Microshift. It's a double crank set. And for the rear cassette, I'm using a Dior M4100 11 to 42 a 10 speed rear cassette. This combination gives me uh, 114 to 19 gear inches or about 600%. Of course, things can be adjusted up or down. By changing the crank set, uh, you could do a 4226 with the same uh, rear derailleur and rear cassette, and that would yield, I think, a more practical 104 to 17 gear inches. The short version is you're gonna get way more range than 1X would provide. 
To get an equivalent range in one buy, you'd have to run a 42 tooth front and a 10 to 64 tooth cassette. So that shows you how far one X has to go to equal the range of a two buy. Even I don't think SRAM will have the will to do a, a, a 10 to 64 tooth cassette, but who knows, people keep buying their stuff. We'll, we'll see where the rabbit hole goes. For the first Mac, let's talk about the GRX A10, which worked perfectly with the 4630 and 11 to 42 cassette uh, in the back with no uh, hanger extenders needed. All, all you really have to do is play around with the chain length and make sure it works. Big Big was reliable, although you probably shouldn't spend a whole lot of time there. Uh, and small, small, the derailleur was able to maintain tension. So if you did find yourself there for a couple of seconds, it's, it wasn't the end of the world. What's interesting is the B screw wasn't even screwed all the way in. For me, this is probably my favorite combo using this derailleur. Uh, you know, shifting work flawlessly, you know, no hanger extenders needed, no weird hacks. You just kind of bolt it on like you would. For, so for me, this is an easy recommendation and would be a 10 out of 10. Again, we're doing a 10 speed with Tiagra 4700, but you could also apply this to an 11 speed group set. Second combination that I tried uh, that was frequently requested was to test out the GRX 400. So this is kind of a down market version of the 810. Uh, you find the GRX 400 on more entry level bikes, but it has similar stated capacity. So I mounted it, rode a bunch of rides with it. Again, no surprise, it worked perfectly. Uh, no hanger extended, and this is with an 11 to 42 tooth cassette in the back. I did find I had to play with the B screw more uh, to take up slack on the small small. There's There was a little bit more of a compromise in the small small. I think what explains this difference is the size of the lower jockey wheel. It's smaller in diameter than the 810. But again, but again, you really shouldn't be riding in the small small. So if you can exercise some shift discipline, uh, then it, this is an easy recommendation. Save you some money over the 810 GRX 400. Easy to recommend, 10 out of 10. If, if you're on the budget, it's hard to beat. Uh, just for funsies, since there's all this buzz now that you know Qs is finally releasing their uh, drop bar shifter some in some time in the future, uh, I, de I decided to see if I could get the Qs RD8020 11 speed SGS rear derailleur to work with Tiagra 4700. Man, that's a mouthful. The Qs derailleur is part of Shimano's new Link Glide which in the tinkering that I've done personally, it seems to work well with HG cassettes as well as chains and has similar enough cable pull to D Shimano Dynasys. In a previous video, I was able to get cues to shift perfectly with MicroShift Sword Black Shifters, which we know uses a Dynasys uh, shift pull or thereabouts, close enough. So to make cues to work, we needed a way uh, to get the new Shimano road lovers to work with a Dynasys mountain bike rear derailleur. Thankfully, Wolftooth makes such a product called the Tanpan. Uh, there are two versions. I use the one designed for 11 speed because by all accounts, Tiagra 4700 is an 11 speed shifter. I mounted it to the end of the derailleur, which uh, isn't the most ideal spot. I think if I were you know, going to commit to this, I'd probably splice it in closer to the shifter, but I, but I put it there as a proof of concept. And, and with some fine tuning, it works. It shifted in sort of typical Q's fashion. So fairly quick into the bigger cogs in the rear, so the easier gears, and a little bit slower going into the smaller cogs. On, on the actual bike, it works pretty well. It, it's not quite as crisp as the GRX uh, derailleurs, but perfectly serviceable. I think the big advantage here, and the reason why you would want to entertain using the Q's 8020, is that you could theoretically run an 11 to 46 in the rear and a two by in the front, uh, similar to the drivetrain on the Panorama Cycles of Boreal I'm testing. So if you want absolutely massive two by range uh, using curly bars in the Shimano ecosystem, then using the Q's 8020 with a wolf tooth tan pan is the way to go. Setup can be a little fiddly uh, and it did take a while for the cable to settle and then I had to take up tension and everything. So in terms of like pure shifting experience, I would rank it closer to a seven out of 10 or eight out of 10. The last trailer I wanna talk about, which is a bit of a wild card, is the S-Ride 508C. So I've tested a previous version of this trailer on the channel ages ago. This is a slightly updated one and it's pretty interesting. Uh, what, what's unique about this trailer is that it has an extra long cage, like absurdly long. It shifts new Shimano natively, so you don't need a tan pan or anything. 
You pretty much bolt it on like you would with any Shimano rear derailleur and it works great. Although it doesn't have like a clutch lever, the spring on this thing is really, really strong, much stronger than the previous version that I tested. So while it doesn't appear clutched, I think for all intents and purposes, if you're riding road or gravel, you, you're gonna get the benefits of a clutch derailleur. The spec sheets on the 5008 are insane. It, it's compatible with really big cogs with, with a huge chain wrap capacity of 49 tooth. So think of all the crazy combinations you could run with that. I think in the older video, I did a spread Eagle drivetrain with a 4630 and 11 to 50 in the rear. So this would theoretically work with an 11 to 46 in the rear and a two by in the front. So if you want that Q's range and don't want to deal with the tan pan and, and the fiddling that may entail, then the S-Ride 508C is definitely a derailleur to check out. Okay, so what, what did we learn? Tiagra 4700 is an interesting anomaly in Shimano's 10-speed lineup. Uh, GRX rear derailleurs are some of the most capable on the market. And also there's a lot more flexibility between speeds and group sets than meets the eye. Uh, this is why I love mechanical. If the gearing doesn't work for you, there is a way to make a very non-standard drivetrain. With electronic, you're pretty much stuck with what you're given. The trade-off is control and customizability for you know convenience and a lot of money. For, so for me personally, no thanks. That's why I like mechanical, mechanical things. These experiments take a lot of time and money. So if you're enjoying this peak mechanical series uh, and you want to support it, then definitely join us on Patreon. That's the best way to do it. Uh, thanks to those already who have signed up uh, or have contributed to keep this series going. So many different hacks out there to try and it's kind of hard to, to get all these parts together and it takes time. For, for the next peak mechanical video, we're gonna do something a little bit different and do a deep dive on this guy. This is the equal control shift lever. So it looks like a road STI shifter, but it's all friction. And it's actually a little bit complicated to set up. And so we're gonna look at the instructions in, in Japanese and try to piece it together and see if we can figure out this guy. Not yet available to the US market, but I did meet uh, one of the folks from GrowTech and they were kind enough to, to give me uh, a pair to play on the channel. So you definitely wanna subscribe for, for that video. As always, everybody, keep the supple side down.